In this video, I'm going to share with you five tips on how to de-escalate an angry psychiatric patient. Hello, my name is Nick, and I'm a nurse working in behavioral health, and I make behavioral health videos on nursing and stuff like that. I want to give a shout out to Joanna Reyes for suggesting this topic. She wrote a comment in another video of mine and said, I started working in psych, don't have any experience in psychiatric nursing, and that's the reason I wanted to be in it. I hope you can also share some tips on de-escalation issues. Thank you, Joanna Reyes, for suggesting the topic. Let's get into our five tips. So my first tip is about safety. I think safety should be our first and foremost concern, especially when we're working inside of a psychiatric facility. So if you have a patient who's very mad, they're fumingly mad, right? They're spitting as they're talking, their speech is very pressured, they're red in the face. The first thing I would suggest is make sure it's kind of a safe environment. So if they're acting this way and they're out in the middle of the day hall, the first thing we need to do is clear the day hall. So we just say something like, all right, the day hall is now closed. Everyone, please go back to your room. And just, we're gonna repeat it till everyone does. And more often than not, what people will do, the patients will go back to their rooms and the patient who is fumingly mad is just going to stand there and continue to be fumingly mad. After we've cleared the day hall, what we've essentially done is we have isolated the patient, right? So now at least we know that the other patients aren't near, so the other patients can't get hurt. And then at this point, we can bring more staff if we need to when we feel like it's safe to approach the patient. My second tip on de-escalating a patient is you need to fight fire with water. So we're going to be the water. They're going to be the fire. They're the person who's really mad. And what we need to do is be the opposite of how they're presenting. So someone who's super upset, right? Think about the way they, they talk. They're talking really, really fast. Sometimes their speech is going to be garbled and disorganized because they're so fumingly mad. And they're going to be red in the face and they're gonna be posturing and they're going to be gesturing really quickly. So when we approach, we need to do the opposite. We've gotta be very calm. We're gonna speak very slowly. We're going to make eye contact, but it's not gonna be threatening in any way, shape or form. And we're just gonna be kind of chill when we approach. So along, the, along this line of being the water, we need to figure out how to calm our own anxiety. A lot of times what I'm noticing with some of the staff who work in behavioral health is that as soon as someone gets very, very mad, their anxiety peaks. So you've gotta figure out a way to calm yourself. I don't know if that's like take a few deep breaths, but do whatever you gotta do so that you can be very calm when you approach. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. My third tip is to let them vent. Typically when you approach, this person is going to be so mad, they're just going to go off, right? And they're just going to keep going off and going off and just talking about whatever because they're extremely upset. And this is absolutely fine and we're just gonna let them vent. We're gonna let them vent. And then finally, when they sort of have maybe given us an opportunity to speak, that's when we'll speak. So tip number four is to validate their feelings, right? So they're really upset. And all of a sudden, usually when people are upset, they'll kind of give you this break where they're sort of waiting for you to say something. And then that's when you just say something like, okay, you're upset because X, Y, and Z. Or you might say something like, so you're pissed because, and then you just repeat the reasons, the stuff that they've told you for why they're mad, for why they're mad. So you're pissed because you didn't get ketchup on your sandwich. You're pissed because your meds came late. You're pissed because this other patient looked at you. And then they're just gonna go off again. They'll probably vent again after you validated their feelings. So then when they vent again, you just say, yeah, I can understand why you would be upset. Just, and it doesn't matter, even if you can't really understand why they're upset, we're here just to validate like this. We're not here to question their reasons for being upset. We're just here to validate them, make them feel heard, make them feel like they've had someone to listen to their concerns. That's all we're doing. We're putting out the fire at this point. We're not addressing anything else. We're putting out the fire. And I would sit here with tip number four, validating their feelings. I would sit here for however long you need to sit there for before you notice them start to calm down. Then what's naturally going to happen is after you've validated them several times and just really listened and not said anything and just been chill, calm and relaxed and you've made healthy eye contact with them, then we move on to our last tip, which is to ask them the important open-ended questions that you were taught in nursing school. So I'll just give you some questions I like to use when we've got to this point in the conversation. I might say something like, Mike, when you're usually feeling this way, when you're when you're really upset, what helps calm you down? Another good question might be, you know, given that you're really upset, what do you what do you need from us right now? How can we help you? You know, you seem really upset and I want to hear 
more about what's going on. How would you feel about going for a walk out in the courtyard? We'll walk together, we can walk and talk. And obviously you'll only ask that question if you feel safe walking with that patient and being alone with that patient. All right, so those are our five tips for de-escalating someone. Our first tip was safety. Our second tip was fighting fire with water. Our third tip was let them vent. Our fourth tip was validate their feelings. And our fifth tip was ask open-ended questions. And then I wanna say if for whatever reason, and I would say this is a very small amount of percentage of patients, but if for whatever reason you've used these tips and they don't seem to be working and you feel as though you've used them appropriately, you've been calm, you've listened, you've validated their feelings, you've asked those important-ended questions, and for whatever reason you just don't seem to be getting anywhere, you know, you can end the conversation at that point because maybe you being there is making them even more angry. And you can say, you know what, um, Mike, I'm going to leave this conversation. I want to thank you for having the courage to share with me your feelings right now. I feel you need a little bit of space. So I'm going to walk back to the nurse's station. If you feel like talking, let me know. You might say something like that. I don't know. However you feel like you need to end the conversation. Sometimes just walking away, straight up walking away. If you don't feel like the tips are working, then just, I would say the next best thing to do is just walk away and give them space. And that's assuming that they're not really being a danger to themselves, a danger to others or anything like that. All right. I hope you found those tips helpful. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it. And then if you have a something you want me to talk about in another video, please leave it in the comment below and I'll make a video about it.